during our translation. That is why I want to acquaint, acquaint you with this basic terminology. Now these surahs, the big surahs have been divided into rukus. This division was not present at the time of the Prophet or during the days of the Sahaba. It was done later on during the Umayyad period and by a person which is not liked by many and that is Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. He is the person who divided Quran, the bigger surahs of the Quran into rukus. Why? Because you know you can't recite the whole of Surah Al-Baqarah in one rakat in the prayer. So there must be portions. So can you can recite them in your prayers. So for that purpose, one ruku for every rakat. The, 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 the root is the same. Raka, ruku, rakat, and ruku. All these things, what are? One rakat, you, you can recite one ruku. So that one subject is discussed in one ruku. So this was done later on, but it was not present in the days of the Prophet or of the companions. Radhi Allahu ta'ala anhu. In the same way, then the whole of the Quran was divided into 30 parts, which we call parads and parts in Quran. This division also was done later on, and we don't know when it was done. But it definitely was not present in the days of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or of the companions. This was to facilitate the Muslims so that every Muslim can read and recite one para, one part of the Quran every day so that each month he completes one recitation of the whole of the Quran. But these two words, these two terms, rukus and paras or parts, they were introduced later on. They were not present during the days of the Prophet ﷺ or of the companions رضي الله تعالى مجمعين. But then, you know, another word which we find in Ahadith, that is Hizb. The surahs of the Qur'an, they were grouped in such a way that Qur'an was divided or divisible into seven nearly equal parts, not exactly equal. Some Hizb is more than five paras. First, first Hizb is more, more than five paras. Some is less, because, you know, if you divide thirty parts, into, and you divide into seven, you know. So what will come? About four and a half in each. But we have somewhere it is four and a quarter, somewhere it is about four, somewhere it is more than five, as I've told you. But the beauty is, and this word was present during the time of the Prophet his because people who had more love for Quran, they used to complete the recitation of the Quran in every week. So they had to divide Qur'an in seven parts so that they can complete the recitation of the Qur'an in one week, seven days. So we find the beauty is that the surahs are complete. They are not broken in this division into ahzab or manzil as we call it in, in Urdu generally. Manzil and the ahzab, this is the Arabic word mostly used. We have three surahs in the first. If you leave alone Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the preface of the whole of the Qur'an, then three surahs, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, one manzil, one hizb, then five in the next, seven in the next, nine in the next, eleven in the next, and eleven, thirteen in the next, and then sixty-five surahs in the seventh hizb. That is also a multiple of thirteen. Thirteen into five makes sixty-five. So actually there is a beauty, numerical beauty, as well as, you know, a gradual increase, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and then 65. So this was also present, this division of the Qur'an, into seven ahzab, or seven manazil, during the days of the Prophet ﷺ. Lastly, there is another grouping of these surahs. And incidentally, this is also in seven groups. These seven groups are groups of Makki and Madani surahs, we find in the Qur'an. One or two Makki surahs, then one or more Madani surahs, it becomes one group. Then two or three or one or two Madani, Makki surahs, then some Madani surahs, second group. Then Makki, then Madani, third group. Again Makki, again Madani, fourth group. Again Makki, again Madani, and so on. These are also seven groups. We find in the first group, Suratul Fatiha is the only surah which is Makki. 
only one. Then four longest Madani surahs, Surat al-Baqarah, Surat al-Imran, Surat al-Nisa, Surat al-Maida, and this goes to make the first group. This is not first manzil, first group of Makki Madani surahs. Then we have two surahs which are Makki, Surat al-Anam, Surat al-Araf. Again, two surahs which are Madani, Surat al-Anfal, Surat al-Tawbah. This is the second group. Then in the third group, we have 14 surahs which are Makki, starting from Surat al-Yunus, ending with Surat al-Mu'minun, and only one surah which is Madani, and that is Surat al-Nur. Then eight surahs which are Makki, again one surah which is Madani, Surat al-Ahzab, so on. Then again 13 surahs which are Makki, and then three surahs, Surat al-Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Surat al-Fat, Surat al-Hujrat, these are the Madani surahs. Then you know from Surah Al-Qaf till Surah Al-Waqiyah, they are the Makki Surahs. From Surah Al-Hadid to Surah Al-Tahreem, these are the Madani ten Surahs. And this is the sixth group. And finally, you know, it's nearly whole of it is Makki Surahs from Surah Al-Mulk to Surah Al-Ikhlas. Only the last two Mu'awwazatain, they are the Madani Surahs. So these are also, and they are very meaningful. Every group has a central idea, central theme. And the aspects, you know, one aspect of central, that subject is discussed in the Bhakti Surahs. The other aspect of the same subject is discussed in the Badani Surahs of the same group.